Thanks for joining me today for our devotion. As we read through 1 Samuel 20, verses 1 through 23, there are some really important truths and life-changing plans being made in the passage. As I argued in the sermon on this passage, one of the things we learn from this section of Scripture is how followers of the Lord can live out a steadfast, loyal kind of love that reflects the kind of love God has for His people. This kind of love is different from a worldly love because it seeks to elevate the needs of the other person before our own interest and seeks their best interest. We can sometimes forget some of the dynamics of a relationship that is taking place when we become familiar with all the characters involved in the story. For those of us who have read this part of the scripture, we know that David will end up being king of Israel, and we tend to insert that knowledge into the story as we're reading it. But this will cause us sometimes to miss an important detail. When David comes before Jonathan in verse 1, we need to remember that Jonathan is still the crown prince of Israel. Expectations and tradition dictate that Jonathan would become king after Saul. And while David is very successful militarily against the Philistines, and he's popular among the people, he was not long removed from being a shepherd boy. It is this gap in position and social stature that makes what we read in verse 4 remarkable. It says that, Then Jonathan said to David, Whatever you say, I will do for you. Now, from a worldly perspective, the gap from shepherd to royal prince is enormous. It is a testimony of God's power and grace and sovereignty that Jonathan and David forged this remarkable friendship. This one sentence, though, reveals an important truth about steadfast love and how we can exhibit this kind of loyal love to others. The crown prince places himself under David's authority. He writes a blank check for David to ask Jonathan to do anything he thinks is necessary. Only a servant's heart could be so trusting and submissive to another, regardless of the world's expectations. Jesus turned expectations on its head when he said in Matthew 20, 28, The Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve, and to give his life as a ransom for many. God's has said, or steadfast love, is willing to take action to display his love for man. Jesus came to earth to serve others by being a sacrifice for our sin, though he was without sin. Practically, it is this servant's heart that Jesus displayed in John 13 when he washed the disciples' feet. Jesus did the job that a slave was supposed to do, which was wash, wash the filth and the grime off the feet of others. Jesus humbled himself by putting on a towel and washing the feet with that very towel as a demonstration to others of his love and his service. But then he says to his disciples, and by extension to us as well, starting in verse 12 of John 13, Do you understand what I have done for you? You call me teacher and Lord, and you are right, for so I am. If I then, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also ought to wash the, one another's feet. For I have given you an example that you also should do just as I have done for you. Truly, truly, I say to you, a servant is not greater than his master, nor a messenger greater than the one who sent him. If you know these things, blessed are you if you do them. A thousand years before Jesus gave his lesson, Jonathan displayed a similar kind of heart to serve David, despite the differences in roles and positions. Also, I want us to see an important point of application for us today. Notice how generous and practical Jonathan's words are. Whatever you say, I will do for you. David is in need, and Jonathan offers to help, no questions asked. You know, there's been moments in my life where I've had so many responsibilities and needs in my life that I felt like I was drowning. God graciously and generously sent people to me that would ask me the question, what can I do to help you? It was like having a life preserver thrown to you just before the waves came crashing over you one more time. I am grateful for those individuals and families who helped me during some of my darkest moments and greatest need by doing little things like cooking a meal, washing a load of laundry, or picking up items from the store. Jonathan's example reminds us that God can use us to meet the needs of others, 
just by making ourselves available to serve. When we put on the servant's towel and serve, it can serve as a testimony of God's love towards us and point people to our Savior. I would like to challenge us to pray a simple prayer to the Lord today. Let us repeat Jonathan's words back to God and tell him, Whatever you say, I will do. Then look for opportunities for God to use you today to serve others. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, thank you for being a humble servant. Even though you were due all the glory, majesty, and honor, you humbled yourself to be a servant and a ransom to many. Today, we ourselves offer us to be used by you. Lord, whatever you say, I will do for you. Now please give us eyes to see and ears to hear about the opportunities that you're going to provide so that we can serve others in your name today. It's in your name, Jesus, we pray. Amen. Thanks for joining us. Thank you for listening to Mornings with Pastor Jim. This podcast is a ministry of Family Church PC. For more information or to contact us, go to familychurchpc.com. Have a blessed day. Thank you.